I'll go back to isolating this subassembly and I'm going to go to the right side view and I'm going to start a new component in this subassembly. So I'll right click, I'll say new component. I'm going to name this component as handle. I'll then isolate the handle and I need to turn on the visibility of the origin and I will start a new sketch on the YZ plane. I'll draw a line from the origin going down and then I'll click and drag an arc off uh, about 90 degrees and then I'll draw a line over horizontally. I need to make sure that there's a tangent at that location so I'll do tangent this arc to this line. I'm going to dimension the length of this line as 1.25 and I'll dimension this arc as 0.5 and I'll dimension the length of this line as 11.385 I will then draw a rectangle and I'm trying to decide whether I want to do this on this sketch or on the next sketch. Let's go ahead and finish this sketch and I'll, I'll do it on a new sketch. So I will do a new sketch on the YZ plane and I'm going to draw a rectangle over here in space someplace and I will change these lines to construction and let's draw a line from the origin over to the midpoint of this line. Change that one to construction and then make this line perpendicular to this line. I will dimension the distance between these two lines as 0.11. I will dimension the distance from here up to the origin as 0.16 and I'll dimension the distance from here to here as 0.18. Okay, then I'll draw two more rectangles. So I'll draw a rectangle from here to about here, from here to about here. I need to drag the endpoints of this rectangle out to here, drag this out to here, and I'll change this line and this line to construction. Let's dimension the overall from here to here as 0.3. And I was expecting all of that to turn black, so it didn't turn black. So if I drag this, I see that I'm missing an equal between here and here. So I could either do equal or symmetry. I'll do equal. This line is equal to this line. Now it all turns black and I will then do an arc and I'm going to do that arc someplace on this line say about from here to here and then up to the midpoint here. And I'll do the same thing over here. So I'll do it from here to here up to the midpoint here. And I want to make sure that this arc is tangent to this line. This arc is tangent to that line. So it looks like I've got this one tangent. So I'll also need to make this one tangent over here and then I'll do coincident between this point and I could have done this when I was creating the arc and the midpoint here and coincident here the midpoint here that all turns black and we'll do the same thing on the other side so here to the midpoint and here to the to the midpoint on this one okay so I want this one to the midpoint here. It all turns dark. It's all fully defined. I'm going to do a pipe along sketch one and so I'll do create pipe. I'll select sketch one. For the diameter I'm going to do 0.25. I will then do an extrude. I'll select this area and this area. I'm going to tell it to go symmetric and distance is through all. I'll do cut. I'll make that sketch visible again and I'll do extrude again. I'll select this area and this area again. I'll put it symmetric and total distance and the distance that I'm going to go is 0.1 and join it to the previous geometry. I'll hide that sketch and and then I'm going to put a fillet over here on this end. So I'll do a fillet and I'll do that as 0.125. All right, let's turn off the visibility of any origins that we have visible. I'll save this. I'm going to go to the top level and I'll unisolate all. So there are our components that we have so far. And I need to join this component inside here to this one. And so I'll do a join and I'm going to select the midpoint of this cylinder and then I'll select the midpoint of this cylinder and I'll have to get that diamond in the middle so I'll hold down the control key and that lets me get that triangle in the middle of that. and I'll say okay to that. Now I may want to put an offset distance on that. We'll make a decision on that in a few minutes. Now I would like to move this all up here but when I try to move it I've grounded one of the components and so it won't let me move that subassembly. so I'll right click I'll unselect ground component in that subassembly and now I can move this 
subassembly up closer to where I'm going to end up using it. And so I'll do joint. I'll then do mid plane between this face and this face. And I'll select the cylinder as my snap point. And then I'll, for a second component, I'll do mid plane between this face and this face. And again, I'll select the cylinder as my snap point. It puts a revolute joint on there. That's what I want. I'll say OK to that. And so now I have the screw located in that location. I'll rotate this around and so we need to put one more constraint in here between here and here. So I'm going to put a cylindrical joint between here and here so this can translate and it can rotate. If I were doing an analysis of this, that would actually over constrain the components for the purpose of an analysis, but we can't do it in Fusion 360 anyhow, so we'll just do the cylindrical joint. So first I'm going to move this down uh, closer to the position that I want it, and I'll go back into my joints and I will tell it that I want a cylindrical joint. That will get the rotation and translation. I'll go back to my position and I'm going to select the circle on this component first on the nut and then I'll select the circle on the end of the screw. We see that that nut can translate and rotate. That's what we expect. We'll say OK to that. And then I want to set this so that as this screw rotates it translates or moves into the nut. And before I do that I want to check the orientation between these two components. And so I'm going to go to an analysis, a section view analysis, which I created earlier, and I see that these two components aren't quite lined up. Now, I may be able to just drag these and line these up. I'm not sure. I think what I'm going to do before I try to drag those is I'm going to ground, but I don't want to accidentally move these components while I'm moving this one. And so let's go to any one of these arms, because once one of them's grounded, the others can't move. So I'm going to do ground on that, and you could test that out now you, you can't move anything it's all locked now because of that ground and then I'm going to rotate this until I see that the teeth are lined up okay so now I see that those teeth are lined up I might look at that directly from the front view and I'll try to get that where it's more or less centered with the same gap on either side now that I've got that centered I'm going to delete that grounded component. Now don't move anything. And then I need to allow translation on this screw. And we'll put in the limits of that translation. So I'm going to go to joint limits, edit joint limits, and I will set the this sliding limit. And I'll do a minimum and a maximum. For the minimum will be zero. For the maximum, let's say 10 inches. And I think I'll put a resting position. And if we want to see that, so it, the, the nut just slid back and forth to 10 inches. And then I also want the screw to rotate as the nut is sliding. So I'll go to motion link and I'll go ahead and capture the current position. And then for the motion link, I have this joint selected. And then I want it to rotate around Z, which is the axis of the screw. And I'm going to tell it to link with shame joints. So normally we pick two different joints and we set the motion that we want between those two joints. In this case though I want that motion within that same cylindrical joint. So I'll click here within the same joint and let's turn off this animation. And then if you remember that our pitch for the screw was 0.1. So change this number to 0.1 and if I zoom out and play this so it goes up, it comes back down the handle is also rotating. Now we're in section view right now. Now you may end up with a situation that sometimes it'll go below the uh, center. But mine is working. Oh, see, there we go. So we'll just turn off the animation and it should return to where it's supposed to be. Okay, so I've got the lined up. I put in my motion links. If I drag this, the threads should stay lined up now as I rotate this. Okay, so as I as I rotate it the the threads stay lined up and the handle is rotating. Let's turn off the section view and I'm going to go around to the side and so as this is going up the handle should be going clockwise. As it's going down the handle should be going counterclockwise. So I'll drag this and so we see the handle is going counterclockwise. If I go up the handle goes clockwise 
if it was going the wrong direction, we would need to reverse that in the motion link. Remember, we have a limit that this is supposed to be able to go up where the, the nut is 10 inches from the end of the screw. Now we could go a little bit further here, but if we go too high, this jack will become unstable. And then if we get to center, we wouldn't want to go past center point, but the screw thread should keep us from going past center point. I'll drag this back down. And so there's my zero position. 